Hey, hey, it's time for Old Roommates. Today on the show, we revisit Dead Poets Society, the Robin Williams 80s classic. So grab your favorite bit of poetry and have a seat. Class is about to begin. <laughs> We're so funny. We are super funny. Hey, hey, it's Old Roommates, the only podcast that... Di- that <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's Sorry. only been a year and a half, right? <laughs> the only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. This is Christina. And this is Brian. And we're talking about Dead Poet Society, 1989, Robin Williams... What do I have to say about this movie? Well, oh, Captain how, Wait Captain. a minute. How come whenever no, we do the I'm intro, no, whenever I, we do the intro and I do that, I always say, Christina, blah, 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 and I throw it right to you. And you well, don't and do that Well, and that's fine, that except, that's fine, except <laughs> I, I, did, I did that once, and you were like, oh, <gasps> you're asking me first? What no, the no, oh, that was, no, that, Christina, no, that was when we did the match game question at the end of, um, a certain episode. I know what you're I'm talking gonna about. I'm going to look up. I'm going to look up. Oh, my no. God. I'm going to look but up. But, God, no, keep talking. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> my God. Um, no. <sighs> All right. Where were you the first time you saw Dead Poet Society? Um, true story. I, uh, watched it on VHS, and I'm telling you, um... Maybe it dictated some of how I felt about this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, bored to tears. Bored. This movie was... So this is 1989. 89. Oh my God. Bored, bored, bored. I mean, they couldn't hire one cute kid to be one of these... I mean, Ethan Hawke's <laughs> cute, but like... Uh, but honestly, back then, I'm being honest. Like, on VHS, I, there are plenty of times where I'm like... Why am I still watching this? It is mm-hmm. such a drag. It is so boring. I don't want to be at the school. I don't care about these kids and their dreams. Um, and then even Robin Williams wasn't doing a shticky, funny thing. And I didn't find him even all that inspiring. To, to be honest, um, I did watch the whole thing then. Didn't remember most of it. And I, I, I don't know. But I did not enjoy this movie then. Snooze fest. That is my. That was my that take, was and I bet. think it truly, truly. I think what I even did. I think I remember. I remember stopping the cassette mm-hmm. um, more than a few times just to like go do something else or like I'll get back to it. And I think I truly only rented it to begin with because it had been up for some Academy Awards. It was. Yeah. It was. A, it was also not for nothing. It was a huge hit. Um, really quick. I think. I think I wrote it down. <clears throat> Made for sixteen million. It made two. Hundred and thirty six million. Right. And it only cost sixteen million to make. So which quite frankly I'm I I'm trying to that. look here. Did it win anything? Was it up for anything? I'm I'm not noticing. Oh uh, we got maybe we'll check on the break. I thought um Um I don't know. We'll 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 take a look later. Yeah. But um that was my take. I remember I didn't, it being didn't care hugely for it. I it did oh a Academy Award oh. for writing. Oh cool, okay. Okay, well there you go. That's about it. A lot of other different awards, BAFTA, like that kind of thing. And what was your take? <sighs> pretty then, much, then, then. Then, pretty much the same. Really? So, I remember watching this movie once, and only once, and I think it was because of the hype. Yeah. Everybody talks. Everybody really... It was a really, huge, it was a huge, it was a huge, huge, huge hit. Yeah. And I remember being bored. I remember it being draggy. It was... I, if you would have asked me how long this movie was, I would have said like three, three and a half, half hours. hours. <laughs> same, same, same. I said it at the same time you did. Same. It, that, oh, God. Yeah, oh, my I remember God. it being very, very long. And I, in fact, I don't think I saw it in the movies. But to be honest, maybe I did because I think if I hadn't, I think I would have shut it off. Oh, my God. Because it was well, a, I did. It was a snooze Plenty, fest. plenty of times. I remember, the only thing I remembered about this real movie is, number one, the standing on the desks, right? That part. Sure. And the end. The well, tragic that is the end. end. That's the end. Well, wait, though. So the end is the standing on the desk. That is actually the very end. Well, right? the... And then... So I guess the yeah. whole... The... 
the, the conversation about the it. I remember, I remember, like the that he that he said, "Oh, stand on your desk for a different oh, point of view." Oh, okay. Like all I remember right. that, and and then of course, like mm-hmm. them all standing on the desk. Like you know, I remember that whole idea of the movie, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the tr- the tragic end. I remember. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't. I I really didn't remember too much more. I didn't remember. Any of like the little little side storylines. What's to remember though? Right? What's to remember? Okay, so we are jumping in now. Let's jump in. Go on. Oh my god, this movie. Uh, so here's what I think. Here's what I think. And this is and this happens this happens in popular culture where there will be a book. Mm-hmm. A book will come out. And everyone will say, Oh, did you read that book? Did you read the book? Did you read that book? Oh my god, that book, that book. That. And suddenly everyone buys the book. But then what you slowly realize is like you can't get through this fucking book to save your life. Mm-hmm. And then when you talk to a friend, you say, you know, I couldn't finish that. Like, oh, me neither. I couldn't finish. I didn't really care for that. Then it's you like, start thinking, yeah. But remembering in 1989, we obviously this is way before social media, you couldn't just connect with someone super fast. And so if I watched this after high school, um, where would I, who would I chit chat with about movies other than my friends right. and it's like but I would be I'm curious to know maybe we'll make this as part of maybe it'll be our Facebook survey question mm. um, is did you did you watch this entire movie and did you tr- or did you truly like it or did you just watch it because, or like it because everyone else liked it because you know that happens you know what I mean about these about books it's right. like everyone buys the book but then half, only half the people actually read it or even like it I wonder if that's what happened here because it's like Who's going to be the asshole that says, oh, I hated the, that movie about these poor rich kids that just want a place in the world or that, you know, but yeah, poor babies. God, I didn't care for it then. I barely cared for it now. I do think, um, it has a couple of inspired scenes, mm-hmm. but, um, I, it left me pretty flat. I could never, I, I have so much to say and I want to let you, let you of speak course, too, yeah, go ahead. but it's like. One thing that drove me fucking crazy, and we've talked about this with TV shows, Mm -hmm. I like when the characters crack each other up. I like when the audience isn't the only one laughing, because we talk about this, Christina and I talk about this a lot with, like, Golden Girls and Sex Mm -hmm. and the City and other TV shows where, or Schitt's Creek, for that matter, is a a more current example, um, where you have all these funny characters, but no one's laughing except the audience, and it's like, no, humans would laugh at that. Right. And, And I like when characters find each other funny. In this movie, something very different happens. They're laughing all the time, and yes. nothing's funny. <laughs> nothing. Oh my god! I'm so glad you mentioned that. I am so glad that you mentioned that. You know, oh. I mean, right? They are it's giggling so... and, and hopping oh. up and down, laughing like, to the point. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! What? Oh, what this is, is hilarious? What this is so is funny? So funny. And they're looking at each other like, "Oh, can you believe this guy? Can you? Yeah. Like, it's not." But funny. then they crack each other up in the cave, and then they're j- dancing around in their blankets and laughing, and then they, one of them has a pipe, and they're all laughing, and I'm like, what? There is, what there is, is funny? Nothing, what did I miss? I missed something. Oh my god. It, I, Christina. I, 100%. So the, thing that, the scene that, that pops out to me when you say that is, <laughs> so, so alright, Robin Williams is another one of those characters, those, those actors, I really liked the, I really liked <clears throat> excuse me, Robin Williams, when he was in a dramatic role. I really liked him okay. better as a dr- dramatic yeah. role, although he, I liked him as the genie in <laughs> Aladdin. Yeah. And I and I liked him, but, but I preferred him as a dramatic actor. Interesting. As opposed to a comedic actor. Mm-hmm. And I think it's sort of similar to a conversation we had about with, with um, Billy Crystal, mm-hmm. just when he's in that the characters, it's just, to me, it's just annoying mm-hmm. when he is in a character. And the scene that just you just reminded me of when you say that was the scene when he's talking about the poetry and Shakespeare and he starts getting Brando. into these characters, yeah. Brando and, um, what's his name? Yeah. John Wayne. Yeah, yeah. And he's doing all this stuff and he's reading this poetry and all you see are these boys cracking up laughing. I mean, first of all, if you found it funny, you would not be rolling around <laughs> on the floor <laughs> laughing your ass off at this stupid impression. Yeah, yeah. You just don't. It's like when you're looking at impressions, you like kind of giggle. You're like, oh, that's good. It's a yeah. good impression. You know, whatever. You have it. You're not 
laughing hysterically. And you see a, a scene, the scene, you don't even see him reading, right? You just hear him reading. Yeah. And you see all of these boys, all super close together, Mesmerized. all of them yeah. laughing mm. like they've never, ever seen, a, you know, heard a joke before. Yeah. And it was just, I'm like, are you kidding me? This isn't even funny. No. And so here's the thing. Here's, I mean, I think my, like, because I'm sure someone's listening and going, well, don't you understand the, the students at the school had a really, you know, it's very rigid yeah, there. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, we get it. We get it. You get it. That It doesn't mean that those they're brain dead and they're going to find and everything they're, hilarious. They're not, right. It's not that they have no emotional compass. Like, they're going to find shit funny. But the thing is, so... The, I also blame, like, Peter Weir is the writer and director, I think, in this one, and he is, um, he did a couple movies that I liked. I, I liked Green Card. It's not a great movie, but I liked it. Yeah, I liked and that movie. Some, and so he's done, um, wit he did Witness with Harrison Ford. But the first 12 minutes of this movie is, I'm, I really, I will sign, I will sign my life away oh, to boy. this. I think it's probably the most boring mm. 12 minutes of a movie I have ever seen. And I am not kidding. It is so boring, and I and sure you could say, well, yeah, they're setting the tone, you guys. They're setting the thing. They're setting the tone. That's so a boring. Carl movie. and I watched um, Marie Antoinette recently, the Sofia Coppola, re, you know, imag retelling or the imag reimagining of that story, and what it did, and it, I didn't think it was a great movie, but what did it did a really great job of showing the mundane lifestyle of these royal characters, these you know, this royal family. And without saying, look how boring, like, but holy <laughs> shit, this movie, this Dead Poet Society does it r way wrong. It's mm. a, don't, you can tell, you can show a boring world without boring the audience. Yes. I watch this going, no wonder I stopped it. No wonder why, so many times, no wonder why I couldn't get through it in one sitting. Like, mm -hmm. it felt, it feels like a chore, this movie. And, um, and yeah, and I agree with you. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't, I never found anything as funny as these kids found it. I never found... And you know something? I'm jumping all over the place and I don't sure, care. Okay. Shallow dives. Shallow dives only. You know, this, um... Robert Sean Leonard, Leonard's... Neil. Neil. Yeah, Neil. Oh, he Neil. reads a lot of poetry in this movie. He doesn't even he doesn't even read it well. Like it's like it's not, he doesn't give it the oomph the poetry he, needs. I this movie, so I am so with sorry. This, I have so many issues with this character. Let's I'm talk so glad, about. I'm yeah. so glad you felt the same way. Yeah, let's talk about you know. So, ah! oh god. All right. So, so let's talk about Neil. Good. Neil. Yeah. First of all, this character is so over the top. Mm. He is such an over actor. Yes, right? Yeah. Everything, talk about being, everything's hilarious. Like, everything for him, every time he spoke, he was like, I'm enlightened! Uh -huh. I'm enlightened! <laughs> like, oh my god, tone it the fuck down. <laughs> Alright? We need to calm down, oh Neil. Okay? And the fact that he is so animated and so like, oh my gosh, something came alive in me. And he still doesn't know how to read poetry. Yeah. Right. That was the most boring part when he read the poetry. Yeah. When he's talking to his friends, nothing... it was like almost opposite. Like it's... you should have had a little bit of more, more, a little more oomph when you're reading poetry. I never, I really feel by going after specific acting performances, yeah. Yeah. but this is one of them. This is definitely Christina, one of them. I agree with you 1000%. Neil oh. is so heightened and hyper. That it, and I wrote right here, Neil is a lot. He's, He's a so lot. Much. And I wrote the scene where he wants <laughs> to be an, and all I wrote was, he wants to be an actor scene. He is jumping around the room. Oh and this is his calling because he read about auditions on a piece of paper. Yeah. And now he, and he, by reading it, he realized he wants to be an actor. Is that how it happens? It's he, so unrealistic for you know, someone. To want to be an actor without actually acting first. Right? Um, how about even a conversation where he's like, I yeah, let's go check out that school play, you guys. Or remember that play last year? I yeah. I like that. Has he or, seen a play? What if right? he connected what if when Robin Robin Williams' character, what if Keating was reading a poem and he's like that reminds me of that play the school put on last year. I kind of wanted to be a part of it. It looked, just looked cool. Like, it would have been so easy. It would have been so easy. Nothing. Because they were talking about Shakespeare to begin with. Right. 
He didn't it would have been so that. easy he connection. To that. It's so bad. And so he, bad. He does say one thing. Okay. I remember in that yeah. conversation, he said he wanted to do summer stock over the summer. Okay. And his father wouldn't let him. That was the only, only. reference to any past interest at all in acting. Now, it's so unrealistic. Uh, okay, so I missed that, but I will say this one. The movie, so I actually watched the deleted scenes. I did. I was glad wow. for punishment. I did. Holy moly. Well, because you know why? Because it was a DVD from the mm -hmm. library, and, and it was over, and I was just too lazy to get up and, like, you know, press... Well, no, I had a remote. What did I do? I guess I just watched them. So I pressed... I watched the deleted scenes, and I think this is a bad, a bad choice, but they cut two scenes after Neil says, I want to be an actor. There actually are two... Um, short scenes where, where he's studying the script and then where he's rehearsing the script with Ethan Hawke's character on the oh, water. Oh, okay. So I'm like, oh, good. Because when the father says, you're not going to be an actor, you're going to go to medical school, and it's a bit of an extreme reaction to where he just goes to you kill think? himself. Where he just kills himself. You think? It's like, why don't, maybe you have another conversation with your dad Do you want to have a conversation, actually? Yeah. All I said was... Oh my god, it's ten more years of my life. That was a, that, that scene for such a long, boring movie. Movie they really pick the scenes they cut. It's like that Jesus scene is so short. It is like you're not da 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 da. Dad, it's ten more years of my life. The scene where he kills himself is longer than the scenes of him and his dad talking about the challenge of being an actor. Mm -hmm. So we watch this very extended suicide scene, and it's like. This seems longer than any fucking conversation you ever had with his dad. It's He's just a weird. Had, it's so weird. I'm wondering, so I want your take on this yeah. because it it did baffle me. I'm like, I'm wondering where they were trying to go with this. Was it why did he actually kill himself? It can't just be because he couldn't be an actor. It can't be that. In my mind, I'm like, was there? Is there? Am I missing something? So, is it because he couldn't stand up for himself? Is that really what it is? The deleted scenes show him really studying and getting up, like you know, into the acting, like yeah. um, to reviewing the script and and he. There's a scene where they run up to that plank on the water, and it's actually where Ethan Hawke's character runs after after he dies, and he, mm -hmm. he throws up in the snow and he runs up. So he, um, but it shows there's a scene of them jumping up and down and like really bonding over the acting and, and they're both encouraging themselves to be stronger. Mm -hmm. Like, it, but it's, it, I mean, this is a short scene, sure. but it's like, and it, but it makes more sense for Ethan Hawke's character too, yeah, it's, where it's, Ethan Hawke is yelling yeah. across the water. So his voice is echoing and it's a nice scene, but, um, it's cut for whatever reason, oh but I think it. They needed to show those scenes because you get a little bit more of an idea of what it, this means to Neil. Yes. But, I, but Christian, I agree. Killing yourself? Like, I, I mean, all he says is, like, you're going to medical school. And it sounds like, oh, oh my God, I'm really, I don't mean to jump. No, it's good. It's okay. Do you remember when Neil tells Robin Williams or, or Keating mm -hmm. that they don't have money like the other kids? And if I'm sorry, if you have a house that has a study in it. Yeah. You have money. You have money. If you have a fucking second floor, or a floor in your house high enough to... <laughs> and not that he throws himself off the, the thing. But, but it's like... But the house looked like a nice house. It's a beautiful house. It's a beautiful house. house. It's a what does he mean doesn't have money? And it's for his dad to say, I'm going to send you to medical school as punishment. It's like... Right. You don't you have, have money. money. You have money, kid. Yeah. Come on. I would have thought so that Ethan Hawke's character maybe didn't have money yeah. based on how he was dressed and things. Like, that's where I thought it was going. Yeah, I didn't get but that. But I would never have thought his character did oh not have money. Oh, my God. And, hi, sorry, yeah. you're such a good actor, right? You're supposed to be such a gifted actor that everybody, oh, everybody gets standing ovation. Like, I mean, all of that was so over the top. You couldn't have pretended to be someone else standing up for your father. That's a great yeah. time to act, right? Um, I'm going it's to, so I'm ridiculous. going to hell. I don't even think he was that good of an actor. No, he wasn't. That. He was terrible. That's and what tough. the fuck kind of play was that? And That's the play you're watching? Well, and also... No, oh, my God. It was There's a Golden Balls episode where B. Arthur recites that puck speech at the end. Yeah. Um, it's like, we mere fools, or whatever the whole... I don't know what that speech is. And B. Arthur crushes it, <laughs> it. You know, with, like, less time. And he has the whole damn play, and it's not convincing at all. He's, I mean, it's like, yeah, it was it's not good. But play, I think they only stood up because they were supporting him. Because he was not great. Although, you watch the actors' faces, and it's like, you think he's giving an amazing performance. I'm like, this is See, so I think bad. we're supposed to believe that he's giving a, an amazing performance, which yeah. isn't right. So, going back to the end, 
and I'm going to rewrite it for a second because okay. so it's placed in the fifties. Um, and I feel like their focus was off. I don't, I think about this. Okay. What if his challenge was he didn't want to be, not that he wanted to be an actor, but that he was gay. Mm. Think about that for a second. So you see, so you bring something else up. Like I wondered about him and Todd. In fact, I, um, on YouTube, when I was like Googling like behind the scenes or little stories, mm -hmm. so I like doing a little bit of trivia on these things. Someone made a super cut of Todd and Neil. So Todd is Ethan Hawke's character. Mm -hmm. And they smile at each other a lot. They get a little like weirdly little um, jealousy when it's like, oh, I can't, oh, I can't go. Yeah, you're going to go. I'm going to make you, I'm going to get them to invite I'm you. I'm going like, to make you go. Yeah, I'm going to make you go. In. And um, when he's, when Ethan, when Todd is sad on the little bridge there and he goes to cheer him up and like they, the way they look at each other, there is, there's something a little homoerotic to those scenes. It's also an all boys school. Right. I don't think you're off. I think it's, I don't know why. I, 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 w I almost wish it was suggested I to have one more truly, layer to him. That's like oppressive for, for him. I mean, please, please know this is not something I'm not saying that if you're gay and you can't come out, you should kill yourself. Please understand that that is not what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I want to make that perfectly clear. Oh it's it, it's a tragedy. Christina has tragedy. been um, my best friend for over 20 years. She was the person I came out to. Thank you, yes. And she was the one that brought me to the gay club. She was yes. the one who brought me to the gay super, bars. Super, super supporter. She is a huge gay LGBT supporter. Yes. So, but with that being said, I feel like the... I feel like the suicide attempt... Mm -hmm would have been more believable if that was what he was struggling with inside. Mm -hmm. Not that he couldn't be a fucking actor, but if he couldn't come out to his parents. I just feel like it would be more a more powerful mm -hmm. statement. I mean, especially since it's it was it was in the fifties, right? Yeah. That, yeah. that this was about I think yeah, late fifties. I yeah. just feel like they missed the mark on that. It seemed almost like a joke that he's seriously he's going to kill himself because he can't be an actor. Well, also in two, it's it's kind of divided, right, with the with the the kids at the school because it's like when the guys like girls, it's very full on, like mm -hmm. calling. Oh, I'm, like she has a boyfriend. He, he's just like in a collar. She has a boyfriend and he's calling her. The other one just brings two girls to the cave. Uh, although he's my favorite character, he's well, hilarious. <laughs> Charlie is my favorite character, but um, the Wanda. But yeah, so yeah, right. So um, <laughs> but I find that there's like, but I there's there's suppressed sexuality with a lot of these these boys at the school. But if you like girls, you're allowed to you know rip like rip it open and just explore that side of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I, I I wonder if it's this. I don't know. I don't know if it's left for the audience, but I agree. I think it should have been more overt. I think there should have been like just. He, Neil just wasn't this person. He is so animated and so like, mm -hmm. like filled with life and like, and so for him to just to kill himself, it's a bit of a stretch. It's a huge stretch without even expressing himself. Like he never even expressed himself mm -hmm. the way he should have and stood up to his father. And I mean, how old are they supposed to be? Like 16? I mean, let's face it. You could go to medical school and... Till you're 18 mm -hmm. and then quit school and be on your own or whatever. Like you can do that. You don't have to kill yourself because you can't, you have to go to medical school. It just was so far fetched to me. That whole I thing. Really, what, Unrealistic character. He could have, yeah, that's a really good point about medical school because yeah, at 18, he could have started medical school and flunked the fuck out. And right. then, and then I his mean, dad would have disowned him and they could have been an actor right. and, and then moved then to New York and be an actor. Hey, everybody, Robin Williams, Christina, that is a great point. And my advice to everyone out there, if you're stuck in the situation where your parents are making you go to a certain <laughs> school, fucking flunk your classes, yeah. they will kick you out, and then run away from and home. And you can live your <laughs> life the way you want to live. <laughs> life is short, and it's getting shorter, so you just do what you want to do. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so, I, I haven't even looked at my, I looked at my notes once. So I lots, lots of negativity from the get-go from us. Do we have 
Much Any positive? Of a positive. I do have some positives. Okay, I have some positives. Not, some not positives. a total monster. Here we go. I love Charlie. I love that he like did shit with lipstick. Oh my god. Oh my I gosh. was like, honestly, and truly, I'm like, wow. Because I was thinking of our FMK questions. Sure. But I'm like, he'd be my my uh, F. Although I shouldn't reveal this, but like oh, my yeah. F and my M. Like he just seems like he's out there and fun, but like grounded, but fun and like passionate. He and, was someone that was believable. Well, yeah. Believable in being inspired by. Yeah, I completely Robin Williams. agree. He was believable. Like you. You could see a little bit of that rebellion in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? I forget what he did, but he was in the class and he did. He said something funny or had a look mm-hmm. or something, and Robin Williams called him out on it. Yeah. So you could see that little inkling of a little yeah. bit of rebellion, like wanting to get out to begin with. Yeah. To begin with, so you it was it was completely believable that he was inspired by a lot yeah. of what Robin Williams did in the classroom, and he just sort of like went with it. Yeah, that to me was believable. We needed a couple more characters like that because this movie's yes. a drag, and Charlie was the only one like that was like that knew how to play the game. Like he knew how to be, yes. he knew just the edge of trouble, mm-hmm. but then he also knew what he could, what he could get away with. So I think it's, maybe it's one and the same. But it's like, but I liked watching that character. Yes. He was fun, and it needed and it, it needed a lot of the that. best best moment. Yeah. The best moment I think of the whole movie is when they're all being questioned mm-hmm. about what happened, and they want to you know basically say that John Keating is the reason why he committed suicide mm-hmm. or whatever, and they're all being questioned. They have to you know sign or whatever. And they're all saying, are you going to tell? Are you going to do it? Blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And Charlie is questioned. He comes out. You don't know what happened. He goes in the, into his room. And they knock on the door. And he, they're like, Charlie, Charlie, what happened? And he looks and says, it's Nuwanda. And then you know right away, you're like, oh, he didn't yeah. rat him out. He's being expelled, but good mm-hmm. for him. You know what I mean? Like, I love that. It gave me a little mm-hmm. chills when he said that. I'm like, oh, yeah. good for him. Because I forgot what happened. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I forgot most of the movie. Yeah. No, I, I, but we're agreeing over and over. Like, great. I really do. I think that was great. And that's another note I have is like, holy shit. Oh, the one signed it. They signed it. They signed it. And I didn't remember that at all. I didn't remember it. To the point where I, could I not remember rewound her. it. Because Carl was watching with me. And I was like, did they all sign it? And except for, you know, but, but it was, you know, um, different, but I was surprised at how many of them just signed that saying that Keating was responsible Mm -hmm. for that suicide. I mean, it's so, it's so insane, but, um, yeah, that was very disturbing. And, but I mean, you kind of understood why with the parents, parents you have to do it, sign it, sign it, sign it, you're being expelled. Yeah. Um, but what was interesting when they showed them the paper, it didn't have all seven names on it. It only had the five, well, four ki- the four that signed it, and then Ethan Hawke's, you know, line to sign. But they did. They should have had two Charlie's. more blank ones. Yeah, they should have Charlie's with no signature. Right. And the other yeah. little first little rat kid, the little redhead guy that yeah. originally said, "We're all gonna get a spell anyway." Blah blah blah. Remember Wait the, the first one? I kind of said, "I'm telling." Yeah. Well, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Cam- yeah. Was it Cameron? I forget his name. I think it was Cameron. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, and then they got to the fight in the the upstairs, yes. whatever. Um, so, let's see. I wrote, did, did we think Neil and Tyler had a little crush on each other? Um, I guess I did have that note. Um, oh, this so the other positive, which, again, that's my only... I like Robin Williams in this. You mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Robin Williams is... He's very reserved in this. And I love that. I liked it. Yeah. I really liked him in this. And I, I'm telling you this, I, I have my own issues with Robin Williams sometimes. I... I never liked him on talk shows. I think it puts me in the minority because mm-hmm. it's like I just feel like he, he was always it on. On, yeah, and it, and I agree. It, it, a lot. I agree. And, but I loved him, and um, oh my god, the Fisher King. Fisher King Fisher was King's his best, best performance. performance I, I think, think so too. I really do. I that so was. We should. Well, how, well, we should revisit that's that. That's in the nineties, yeah. But that, I mean, Rod, I think Robin Williams Perfect. is the best, best that was performance. Best, best but best I, I liked him in Good Morning Vietnam. I liked him. I mean, God, I liked him in Mork and Mindy. Loved him in, you know, Aladdin. To your point. Mm-hmm. But um, so the scene. So the other positive I have is Ethan Hawke and Robin Williams when he's covering Ethan Hawke's. 
I got like I got some chills. In I that. absolutely like, got that chills is some from that. Really good, crazy acting. Yeah. Um. Agreed. I really loved that. One of my favorite scenes yeah. was that. Yeah. That scene and that's there. that is a scene where I'm like. Oh shit! And you're just like, where's the rest of this movie? I want to watch yes. that movie. Right. Yeah. And again, it was very believable in his character. You could see how he really was shy. He didn't want to talk. Blah blah blah. But you could see how Keating, the character, you know, the teacher, the name of the teacher's key, Robin Williams' character. He, you could see how it was believably brought out in Ethan mm -hmm. Hawke's character. Just. The questions that he asked, and just it, it was believable. Mm -hmm. I could, I totally did. It was great acting. I thought, mm -hmm. um, and the camera angles, and just like kind of like that, that build up and build up, and all of a sudden it was like, you know, he he spouts this line, mm -hmm. and silence, and everyone's like in awe, like wow, that was awesome, and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. I, I'd like. I agree. And what's funny, a point to Robin Williams too is that particular role. I kind of I give him a lot of credit for it because he could have gone Full. a lot yeah. more animated and a lot more un or um, orthodox, mm -hmm. and he didn't. He played it down, and I appreciated that a lot. So interesting little fact: um, Robin Williams was really excited to do the movie, and t but originally the director was the guy who did um, Revenge of the Nerds, oh. and Robin Williams dropped out, and then the whole project fell apart. And then Dustin Hoffman got wind of this project, and Dustin Hoffman was actually going to star in and direct. The I movie. could see that. I think he would um, do. He would have done well. And then for a reason that fell apart, and then Peter Weir got interested, and Robin Williams was like, "Yes." Um, so it it had a couple of different lives to it, but I, I do think it's a it's a really good performance, um, and. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's a good performance. Although his character didn't have the best advice, like he reminded me of Mrs. Garrett a lot of the times because he had this conversation with with Neil, <laughs> and I mean his whole like I just feel like he didn't he didn't really ask Neil the right questions when he, when Neil was saying, "Oh yeah, my father wants me to drop out," he, you know his response was, "Just go tell him how you feel. Mm -hmm. Tell him your feelings," mm -hmm. and like. Obviously, it's hard for him to even talk to his father. Forget and forget about talking to his father about feelings. And I felt like it was kind of shitty advice. Like that's it's un, almost unrealistic advice. I think he could have come up with something a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I agree. I remember. I do remember that scene, and I felt like something was missing from that scene too. Yeah, because it was. That's what I mean. This movie is bad. It's just, and I'm, and I feel bad. I know it means a lot to a lot of people, but. It's just the scenes where it should be longer and more thoughtful, it's cut short. The scenes that are boring as fuck and should be short cut or left in. Like, there was some, just some bad, bad calls in this. Um, and I do want to quick, I have another note in here because there are so many scenes, again, where I just wrote, cue commotion. Like, yeah. It's where, it's mm -hmm. like suddenly like they're just in a cafeteria or they're in a cave with a cave or yeah. they're somewhere else. And it's just like, or it's like they're in that room, their their own room, and it's like, give me the notebook, give me the notebook, uh, wee, and the well, camera's has, spinning all around the room. It has spinning, it has that like kind of weird music in the yeah. background. Did you notice the music? Yes. It's like, oh, this is supposed to be the fun part of the movie. Christina, I swear to fucking God, I wrote, <laughs> I wrote, <laughs> give me the give me the notebook, wee. I wrote. Apparently, laughter isn't allowed allowed at the school either, um, oh. because it that you're exactly right. It's that like. This is the fun time? What? Yeah, oh my it's God. yeah, it was it was a bit strange. Um, let's see. So for positives for me, I just felt like the Robin Williams scenes did it for me. I feel like they were the positives. Mm -hmm. I thought he was great, like I said, aside from that one scene where he's in doing the voices. I did not appreciate that, as yeah. I mentioned before. Yeah. But the other ones, the the marching, right? The, the he takes them outside yeah, to yeah. walk around. I like that. that. I like to hit that. Like he that also. Was, like kind of had that hands-on um, teaching style. The ripping the pages out of the book. Yes, that was a good scene. Yeah. And um, the and I love that. That meant more to me, way more to me now than mm -hmm. that. Because it's like I, I that 
All right, that might be, but after the the Ethan Hawke, Robin Williams scene, that's probably my second favorite scene in this. Because that was surprising, but it means more to me as a grown-up to be like, sure. oh, shit, that's pretty bold. Whereas, like, Very bold. back I mean, then, when I was stuff. younger... But, <laughs> right. but the point is, don't let someone else tell you how art should make you feel. Yes. Like, that's the it point. And I, point. And it means a lot more to me now as a 48-year-old than, uh, you know, whatever, 17 or 18-year-old, right. whatever the sure. hell it was. But it's like, um, because honestly, when you see a Robin Williams movie, you're expecting some hijinks. So I think so much, so that, as an adult, I got it much better. Sure. Yeah. And I did like, I mean, I felt like you could see how the boys would be... Um, would be inspired by him in the way he yes. taught because it is so different from what they are normally taught mm -hmm. sitting reading studying blah 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 so you get that um so yeah that was definitely the positives for me is that his his scenes and i will say i think and again it's actually probably a testament to the robin williams character and his acting but i will say at the very end when they stood up on the desks it brought a tear to my eye. Did it? It did. It moved me. Yeah. And it was because of Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. You could see how touched he was and how he's like, you know what? I made a difference in these boys' lives. Mm -hmm. They are moving forward and doing unorthodox things. Yes. Thinking for themselves. Really quick, you know, the redhead doesn't get up. You noticed that, right? Yes, I noticed that. And that's one of my positives, yeah. too. I was very happy to see that it wasn't every... All of them. That would have been much. That would have been I much. I was so happy to see it was about half the class yeah. that did it. And it wasn't just the seven. Right. Or, well, I guess it, it was five that at was that point. So inspired. Yeah. It was probably, what, 10, 11? Mm -hmm. I just thought that was well done. Um, so the reason why I bring up the redheaded kid, and I'm sorry, I don't, I don't remember that character's name. Or I the feel like name. it was Cameron. Cameron. Cameron sounds right. But I will say, um, that was his idea. He actually went to the director, Peter mm -hmm. Weir, and said, listen, I don't think I, my character would stand for that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, then don't. And I think that's much more powerful. In the script, he's supposed to stand up in the desk, ah. too. So, I, so like, I, that's what I mean. It's like, I feel like... It just, oh God, this movie is bad. It's just like, it, it just could have been so much more. And mm -hmm. I really wanted to, I really like, I didn't, I mean, only because I remember it being so boring. I'm like, well, I'm an adult now. I'll have more, I'll have more patience. Please. Right. I mean, I like, I love like The Accidental Tourist, which people think is one of the most boring movies ever. So it's like, but this was just, yeah. just bad. And I will tell you, so I, <laughs> I was sort of putting off watching this because I knew and again, I, at the time, I was thinking, I knew it wasn't three and a half hours, but I knew it was a long one. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm, like, I'm going to have to really be awake for this. <laughs> it's a commitment. I'm going to have to pay attention. You know, yeah. I knew it was like going to be a task yeah. watching this. And I made Matt promise to watch it with me because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, maybe you can keep me awake. Um, but uh, I watched it last night and it was... Um, I was afraid I was going to fall asleep in the middle, okay. to be honest. Yeah. I really was afraid. I'm giving myself a huge pat on the back for not falling asleep in, yeah. uh, in the middle of it. Yeah, uh, and so we had funny. gone to an Oktoberfest, too. Oh, wow. So we had been, like, drinking a little bit, too. So that yeah. that was, like, another, like, oh, I hope I can stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> Should we... Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Gonna say the I was going to take a break. Yeah, yeah that's, okay. exactly. Let's take a break, and we'll be back with our final thoughts and questions on Dead Poet Society. Be right back. Hey there, it's Brian and Christina. We just wanted to take this break to thank you for listening to Old Roommates, the only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. Please subscribe to Old Roommates on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts. And give us a rating or review while you're there. And if you have any questions, comments, or observations, shoot us an email at oldroommatespod at gmail.com. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Old Roommates. Thanks for listening, and now, back to the show. And we're back talking about Dead Poet Society and the love we feel for that <laughs> movie. But I will say this. You know what? I actually think... There's something to it because we're, agree. we're agreeing the entire time. Yes. Even the things we liked, we agree with, mm -hmm. but we really didn't like a lot of it. And we're, but we're agreeing. All our reasoning is the same. Like we even like 
Robin Williams in the part. Like, everything is... Uh, this is what I mean. I feel like we're on to something. Yeah, I, this I cannot think so just be, We cannot be the only two people that thought this movie stunk. Like that was just a total raging, boring bus kill with a couple of ins- uh, with a couple of nice scenes. I just feel like with a few tweaks, it would have been such a better movie. Yeah, you know, just a few different and yet, things. And yet, two hundred and thirty-six million dollars. It's just so nuts. Was um, this? Oh, I was gonna say, is this one of? Robin Williams' first dramatic roles. Yeah, there was some, I'm sure there's some interest because of that. Because I think that might have been part of it. Like, oh my God, like such a surprise. Like, oh, he was so yeah. good because you're so used to seeing him so like, like it's manic a, comedy. And it's also one of those one of those performances where I didn't look this up, but I he doesn't, he's not in it a whole no, lot. No, he's really yeah. not. He's really not. So I had a couple of things sure. I wanted to just mention. Um, one thing I thought was kind of interesting that I, I never noticed before, but I noticed last night when I was watching um, Overstreet says, quote, if I don't have Chris, I'm going to kill myself, end quote. Wow. Right? Yeah. It's sort of strange that yeah. they would put that in there knowing what the ending would yeah. be like. Of course, it was a different character, to right, be clear, right, right. but it was still kind of interesting. I also thought it was interesting that he went to this party and Chris had passed out. Did that make you uneasy? Yes. She had passed it on the couch. Mm-hmm. He's sitting next to her and he's like thinking to himself, Carpe diem, seize the day. Like, I'm like, is he going to, like, try to kiss right. her in the lips? I know. Like, this is not okay. We have enough, like, headlines nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, and it's that weird. That she's passed well, out. It's also, like, the white, rich, preppy boy taking yeah. advantage of a girl who's unconscious. I mean, that is, that, you know, I mean, this is from 1989, it but it's like, very but it's a little weird. Yeah, it was it's very not weird. okay. He it wasn't okay then. He kissed her on okay the forehead. Now. I yeah. mean, so that gives him a little bit of a Well, pass, but he also but ran his fingers through her hair. And he touches her hair. Yeah, yeah kind of yeah. really gross. creepy. Please, I'm glad please, he got please. caught doing that. Yeah. Um, but then she forgives him and everything. I mean, it was it was fine. It was minor, but yeah. still, like, it made me sit up and notice. It's a little skeevy. Um, I also said I know a lot of this was boring, long and boring, but didn't did you feel like that scene when Charlie brought the girls down into the cave I just felt like that scene was so freaking long. And it kept going back and forth to Overstreet in this. And I'm like, they're still in the cave with the girls? Like, Seriously. It was a, I would love to see how long they actually, those scenes put together were. Because it was, it just seems like they should be done by now. Like, um, so. I watched the little documentary on the DVD. Mm-hmm. Well, that, they would have, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't. Watch the whole thing. That was long too, but um, one of the actresses who's in Pen Fifteen now, George uh-huh. Pen Fifteen. So I think her name is Melora Melora Hart something Melora something Melora Hart wa- wa- Waters. Yeah. So I'll look, well, okay. no, I won't look it up. But anyway, but it's her, and she says she talks about that, and that Peter Weir, the director, was like, no, just like hang out, talk, make up conversations, just veg out, relax. Like, he wanted that to be a long scene. Ugh. Like, I don't... These are just they bad choices. Yeah, there's a lot of questionable directing choices. Yeah, it's just yeah. weird. It's like, why is... Why expand on that? It would have been better to have the scene that you were talking about that was like, give the, give the Give Neil and his dad some sort of some sort of conversation. Give Todd and Neil a longer conversation on that bridge. Give Keating and Neil... I mean, Neil, if anyone needed some... Some calming. He needed some down. rounding he out. He needed some rounding out because yeah, he, sure. he's a lot. He could but, use um, some meds, I think. Uh, what else do you have? I only have so, one n- other note. My last note was actually about Neil's parents. I thought they did an amazing job um, acting. Okay. Oh, when they find him. Oh my god. Yeah. That brought a tear to my eye. And it was so. That gave me a jolt. It gave me, yeah. yeah and it was because it's the first time you see him unraveled. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you see that regret, like, immediately. Like, oh, my God, my son, my son, my son. And you feel like, oh, my God, he does kind of love him. Yeah. Right? yeah. And she, oh, that broke my heart. Yeah. He's okay. He's okay. Yeah. He's okay. Oh. Yeah. That was gut, gut-wrenching. Mm-hmm. It really, really was. He, They did a fantastic job with that. Yep. Yeah. And I liked, actually, I liked that they, you didn't actually hear the gunshot. You didn't actually hear that. He hops up 
Noises. Oh, right, right, right. What was that noise? I like that effect yeah. a lot. Yeah. And I'm glad you don't see him. Yes, I think mean, that was a smart choice. Yeah, also. very smart. Yeah, I couldn't remember he how probably that... would have had a smile on his face. I remember that happening, but I don't remember how it played out. And I'm like, I can't remember if they did they show a shadow. Is there like blood on the wall? Like I was trying to remember, mm -hmm. but um, but they did that well. They did it well. Um, my only note is kind of a comical one, but Saturday, Saturday Night Live. And if you haven't watched it yet, I'm sure you've seen this. Farewell, Mr. Bunting. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I saw it. Okay, we're going to watch it after the after we Okay. Take. But, um, yeah. So, but watch, SNL does a, sketch, uh, does a parody of this called Farewell, Mr. Bunting. It is so good. Fred Armisen <laughs> plays the um, Robin Williams character. Oh, I love him. Very, very good. Um, should we go into questions? Yeah, let's do it. So, I have an FMK for you. Okay. So, it's Fuck, Mary Kill. I, again, I'm very nice to you with these. You are very nice. Charlie... Okay. Nawanda. Yeah. Uh, Todd, played by Ethan Hawke. Mm -hmm. And Keating, Robin Williams. Oh, okay. So as his character. He These are the characters. Yes, the characters. okay. Not necessarily Robin Williams. So I'm going to say, let's see. I think I'm going to have to kill Todd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the smirk on his face <laughs> says it all. You should see the smirk. He's like so proud of himself. I think I would, I kind of think I would marry Keating. Yay! I only get happy because, remember when we started doing this podcast, I w always got them wrong. Do you think this podcast is bringing us closer, closer together? together? We're, We're getting to know each other? I mean, or do I really you think you just know how I'm going to answer now? That's maybe that's it. Because we, we know, I mean, we've been friends for over 20-something years, so I feel like... Um, but I think I'm understanding your differentiators for yes. FMK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got it right. And would you do the same? Um, you know what? I, th I think, think you would swap Keating. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think um, I would marry Charlie. Yeah. I really like that character. He was a good character. Yeah. He was a good character. I agree. Um, all right. So I have a question yeah. for you. So my question is, so John Keating's teaching was sometimes a little bit inappropriate. Oh. I don't want well, the orthodox, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So my question to you is, I have a multiple choice answer. Okay. What do you think his teaching, which, which of his teachings was the most inappropriate? Was it encouraging vandalism by ripping out pages from a school issued textbook? Okay. Was it encouraging these boys to leave the dorm, breaking rules, re leaving the dorm in the middle of the night to form this club that was clearly against the rules. Mm -hmm. And actually, if they got caught, they probably would have been risking expulsion, okay. is my guess. Or was it trying to encourage Neil to convince his father that acting is yeah. the way to go, not understanding their relationship to begin with? So not necessarily that advice, but like, without understanding the parent-child relationship. Yeah. Um, it's funny, because as much as I loved the scene and I, and I understood why and all of that, I think because it incriminates so many of the kids and it wasn't an option to do, is the ripping the pages out of the book. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah, because say. as much as I loved it, I loved mm -hmm. it. It's like, that's a really good, you know, it's a good lesson. It's a good understanding, you know, to say, don't let someone else, to, you know, tell you how to feel about art. But... It incriminates all the kids. It, it right. wasn't. It wasn't a choice. So, you know, and it's defacing school property. I don't know. Right. I don't think they buy their own books, but no, like, not. it's um to school. So, I think that is the biggest uh, miscarriage of justice. I I agree, and I I thought you would say that as well. So I'm right. Yay! Yeah. All right. I guess that's it. That's it. Did poets? Sorry, did poet society fans? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Rewatch it. You might think differently mm -hmm. if you're a fan. But anyway, that's it. And that is it for us and for this episode of Old Roommates. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to Old Roommates on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever you listen to podcasts. And give us a rating or a review while you're there, please. 
If you have an idea for the show or a suggestion or comment, you can email us at oldroommatespod at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Old Roommates. This is Christina. And this is Brian. Thanks again for listening. Until next time.